What's up, folks? Welcome back. This is the Cloud Pilot, and you're listening to the Cloud Pilot podcast. In this episode, we are going to talk about how to crack coding interviews, and by that I mean data structures and algorithms. So to talk about that today we have a very special guest who is a software engineer at Google. So let's welcome Harsha Vardhan to our podcast. Welcome Harsha, thank you so much for accepting my invite and it's an absolutely a pleasure to have you here. Hi, hey, thank you. Thanks for having me here. It's always a pleasure talking to you. So Harsha, do you mind sharing us about your journey how you started with Microsoft and now into Google? Sure. Uh, I'm a 2020 grad from Amrita University Coimbatore and uh, right at the end of third year I have done my two months internship uh from uh, microsoft and later on i went again in my eighth semester to do my six months internship and later i was offered a ppo and then i joined back as an fta at microsoft and close to two years later um i was restarted re- by a recruiter at google and i gave interviews for the role and um and i made a lateral move to google and currently it's been three months here can you tell us about how to learn data structures and algorithms from scratch Yes, learning data structures from scratch is similar to how you learn any other skill, right? So, what would you need? First things is you are need to get the basics right, and then you practice upon what you have and become a pro in that area, right? Similarly, when you wants to get familiarized with yourself and you know comfortable with DSA and crack these coding interviews, uh, first thing is to get yourself familiar with the programming language, right? Uh, be it Java, Python, or C, C plus plus. c sharp whatever for that matter uh, get familiar with the programming language know the basics of it uh, what's a for loop what's an if condition about conditions uh, what are while loops you know very basic things that i'm talking about functions and stuff so and then later on you uh, get into this dsa part of it where where you learned about data structures and algorithms uh, as the name suggests and once you get to know what are the basics uh, like what's a stack what's a queue what's a graph what a tree uh, graphs and trees might be a little little advanced but still they are very much asked in a lot of interviews so getting familiar with our data structures and also uh, what are the famous algorithms and what are the things that you would usually get asked but it, i'm not asking you to just prepare for the interview but just to know what are the different kinds of thing that you can do these um data structures right because for a problem what do you need you need a data structure and you need an algorithm so you need to know how uh, what data structure to select for a given problem and then what algorithm that you already know of can be linked to this problem can be used is it a mix and match of these different algorithms that can be used to solve this problem and this is an expertise which you gain over time as you solve more and more problem it gets more intuitive and your brain thinks in a way and it gives you hints as you practice right uh so that that that's the only way that i can think of you know getting to know the basics and then practicing uh consistently is one way i would say to get to ace these interviews how do we perform in a coding interview coding interview one consistent uh, advice that i would give to anyone who's just going to interview is that keep talking you know the more you if you are able to convey to the recruit uh, to the interviewer the more you are saying that hey i'm thinking in this way so if i'm going in a weirdly different direction you can help me with some clues or maybe if i'm understanding the question itself wrong you can help me understand it better unless you talk in an interview the interviewer cannot magically read your mind uh, to help you out there right so talking out in interviews and then starting with the brute force if you are not unaware of the optimal solution directly don't panic uh it's just another interview if if you miss this there might be another company which is waiting for you so uh, all that i wouldn't say you should have that negative mindset that i'm going to screw this up but at the same time that pressure is not going to do any good right so having that calm mind and saying that uh, with that reduces a lot of nervousness at least for me it helped saying that okay if if even if the google doesn't happen it's fine uh, i'll try it next time maybe after the cool down cool down period um so uh it's not that i'm having a mindset of that what if i don't select and all that but it's just to help me be myself more calmer that's how uh, i'm allowing more ideas to come into my brain because now i'm out of that fear right so uh keeping your nerves uh, like uh, keeping calm uh, second thing is keeping out your thoughts out 
constantly and at the same time if you don't know the optimal solution start from the brute force and then go to optimal instead of scratching your head about, about the optimal solution because at least that way the interviewer knows that yeah he knows what's the basic solution is the basic solution is otherwise he might think that he doesn't even know what the basic solution is he might not even have no clue about optimal but all the way maybe your basic solution is the only solution to that problem so a lot of them that also happens that some questions doesn't have super lock in algorithms right it might still be order of n and that might be the answer to it but you might be thinking that this can't be this easy it has to be better so uh, to avoid such screw ups you should always start with what you know and then build on top of it and uh, also a lot of times the recruiters do that they start with a simple question and then add on constraints to it and make it a medium level question for the next round right so um, always start with the if you are not i'm saying again if it's a very standard problem go straight out at the optimal solution but if not start with brute force and then climb your climb up your way to the optimal solution how do we answer behavioral questions when i am right out of college i didn't have any behavioral rounds to get into microsoft per se um, but at google we have a googleiness round right where you are asked particularly about behavioral questions so for that the preparation would mostly been already done because you would have already been those scenarios and they ask you like what's the toughest project that you have worked upon what's the thing that because sometimes it's, uh, you might not live through that situation but you have seen uh, if uh, like you have to put yourself in that shoes and think what would i do it right so one thing is obviously it's not as direct or you know you might someone say that in a rotator rotator array find the minimum element you might already know hey i'm going to do binary research and i know how to do it but behavioral questions are not always like that because you have to it's all about perspective right so you have to think on the spot and be you know elegant in how you are going to solve any issue that's given to you but at the same time uh, you should do your homework you should collect your experiences it's not magically that you are going to remember all your two or minus two but someone else who is doing doing an interview after four years they might not remember all the stories or all the experience they had in the four years right although they have lived through it they are not picking it up but uh, you know there are some very uh, say for example how you are going to resolve a conflict so these are some questions that are very frequently asked in behavioral questions i'm not asking you to write the answers as well i'm just asking you to recollect these things um, like what are the different experiences that i went through um, what are the different projects that i have worked upon what was one amazing thing that i have done you know maybe was the toughest project that i have worked upon in other words um you know when is it that i have to convince my other teammates so these are the types of questions that you want to have preparation it's not magical i'm telling you it might seem a little um, ironic that you are preparing for a behavioral question which is supposed to test you on the spot don't worry if you are Uh, you're not going i'm not asking you to write scripts on how you are going to answer them but at the same time be familiar with the scenarios that you are already part of right so, so that way you don't have to have that awkward silence where the recruiter ask and you wait to think about and uh, brush your memory and get uh, get that answer up so uh, getting familiar with these and you know and a lot of there are a lot of hypothetical scenarios that recruiters use these days saying that what if this happens what would be your reaction right and those things uh, have to be spontaneous you can still prepare to some extent by seeing other archives of you know behavioral questions and stuff like that but you should always have that growth mindset as uh, when i was in microsoft we uh, and also in google right we talk a lot about uh, growth mindset how you are always open to learn um uh, having that leadership skills in you so these are things that you would you should be already be ready with that makes your interviews a lot smoother but at the same time you need to prepare for it and also be spontaneous it's it's not a very it's not a question and answer right you have to go through the process and you know, maybe take some mock interviews with your seniors or maybe uh, see through the experience of others uh, collect stories uh, stories means like what you have gone through just collect what Uh, what is the projects you have worked upon and all the homework should be done before these interviews what kind of questions should be asked during an interview this is one thing that i have always been about every interview that i had i had to go with a preset question in my mind so i'm going to ask this interview because it's not again it's not spontaneous uh, uh, so one thing it's always good to know is about the culture of the uh, company like was uh, but at the same time i've seen uh, some of my colleagues at google they uh, to, they tell me that uh, not not exactly at google but yeah some of my friends that i know uh, they tell me that you know what 
the uh, the questions that these candidates ask are like why do you want to work for google why should i work there they are arrogant in first place so that is right out of the question you are not you are the interview they are not the interview i'm not asking like that but at the same thing you can you can be curious about the interview maybe you have heard about the pareto principle right 80 20 uh, so 20% projects uh, how are they selected you know asking such questions which tell the interviewer that you have done your research on the company and their practices and uh, any doubts on top of that or you know any uh, anything that you want to know uh, that the recruiter might already know like so you need to know that the recruiter is also a, com- a software company uh, he's also working in that software company right so anything that you want to know about the company that any software engineer of that company should know so any questions like that will fall into this bracket bracket mm-hmm. um yeah what resources do you suggest to prepare for coding interviews for coding interviews one amazing resource i found is how to crack the coding interview that green color book which a lot of people would have already seen that's an amazing book to start apart from that uh, i also go through uh, geeks for geeks archives questions the questions which have those tags uh, for the companies you are targeting for those things and also uh, for each say for example you have taken graphs in the graphs uh, take some uh, fixed example maybe three easy four medium and two hard so a uh, fix like that and uh, any random questions on leak code you know you have to do this random exercise it cannot always be archives 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 you have to explore new stuff as well right so these things uh, what else leak code discuss people say like what kind of questions are uh, mostly asked in these interviews if it's right about the interview if it's about the particular company then you should also look at those because uh, trends change maybe you can focus more on dynamic programming and on graphs when you are joining google um, or yeah each company uh, mostly uh, has their own expertise like what sort of questions are these people asking these days having an idea around that would also help um, and yeah just uh, apart from all these one thing i would say is being consistent would help a lot so even though you are not uh, doing 100 problems on a single day even one problem per 100 days is much better i would say so that way be consistent but uh, any um, any platform of your choice i'm not going to say uh, do lead code do code forces any platform of your choice which has these kind of features where you have company tag problems and archives and um, interview experiences of other people what are the tips that you want to give uh, to the aspiring uh, candidates for software engineering or the upcoming coders one thing is to be curious uh, i always tell this to myself also because uh, there's nothing uh, more fun uh, if you if you are loving what you do it's always great right so always be curious to learn these new things so so that is one thing and uh, always be open to feedback um, see what others are doing uh, i'm not saying you have to copy them but um, take some inspiration from them maybe someone is doing the leak code challenge uh, for one month straight or two months straight um, maybe you can pick up at least you will do 20 days out of 30 days and that's still like very good uh, amount of problems that are getting solved right so uh, always be open to feedback uh, be curious and um, look out for opportunities this is one main thing like um, a lot of times we don't know that things exist right so do your research on different opportunities that exist um, not just for opportunities to join a company opportunities to learn as well you know to be part of a community uh, maybe you have a coding community around your area you which you are not aware of be aware of these things um, be part of a coding community and uh, that makes life a lot easier uh, participate in uh, multiple hackathons um, yeah it, it all boils down to one thing just be, be curious how did you feel the podcast was how was your experience it's amazing out there and if, uh, if there are more questions i would be uh, happy to uh, answer those uh, maybe you, in your description you can link my uh, linkedin uh, link and um, yeah happy to connect and always great talking to you man Yeah it was my pleasure to have you in my podcast uh, thank you so much for coming thank you so much guys for listening i hope this was helpful enough for you we'll catch up soon in another one till then it's me the cloud pilot signing off